Hi everyone, in today's video I'll tell you everything you need to know about table partitions in a relational database. I will first explain what they are, how you can use them, what are the pros and cons of partitioning the table, and then we will go over a short example how to use them in practice. Let's get started. So what table partitions are? So when you partition a table, we essentially split one table into several smaller tables and we split them by rows. So some of the rows go to one subtable, some of the rows go to another table and some of the rows go to another, yet another table. And then can, can be many these subtables created. You can also think about a partition table like many smaller tables with a similar, often the same structure and that are logically brought together in a DBMS and so that you are able to conveniently still use all the data that you have. Now, what is very important is that this is quite advanced concept. So this will different between different database management system implementations, as in this will work a little bit different in DB2, in Oracle, in Postgres and so on. Just to continue on our example, let's take a look at this table here. Let's take a look at this column that we have here with the numbers. Let's assume that this is our partitioning key and we partitioned the table by a list where values that have in this partitioning key column one go to one partition and values that have two go to another partition. And this is how they now will be stored. So the rows that have a one will be stored next to each other and the rows that have a two will be stored also next to each other. And by the way, these partitions, so these subtables, can be stored in a different table space and in a different schema, although here the restrictions sometimes depend on the database management system that you are using. So now what is the big benefit? Well, the benefit is query speed. So this is a similar to an index where if we now write a select statement, whatever we select, uh, from the table and the table is the, the whole table that contains all the rows still where partition key column or however the column is named equals two. Now the database will automatically know, aha, I have this table partitioned on the key column and I have to look up only the partition where the values of the partition key column are two. So it will go only to this partition and it will only scan these records that are in this partition right here. It will not touch the records that we have up here or the records that we would have in any other partition. Now, obviously this improves query speed. And I already made the reference to indexes because I think that these two topics are often brought up together because indeed they both can improve query speed. And I think the general rule is you use indexes if you want to retrieve very few records use partitions if you want to retrieve more records. So basically uh, these will perform better when the query that you will be using will be returning you more records than an index will. Because here the database will still have to go to the disk and will still be then reading using a table scan or will be scanning the whole partition and reading the, the records here. So a very common use case of partitions is when, especially in analytical databases, we have some reports that contain some data that are reported for every month. So we would have reports that, let's say at the end of, or of every month, would calculate some statistics from this month and would add them to the table. So if we have a case like this that we now try to do here, so we have the some rows here from the 1st of January 2020 and some rows here from the 1st of February 2020, we now define a partition on this reporting date. We define it, let's say, by a range. We will go over that later because partition you can usually by a list of values, you can partition by a range and you can partition by a hash. But once again, this depends on the DBMS that you are using. These are the most common options that you have. So you are, we are putting the records with the 1st of February up here and the records from the 1st of February down here. So once again, the 1st of January here, 1st of February here. And now, of course, if we run a query on this, 
the database will automatically know that if in our query we are saying reporting date equals the 1st of January 2020, I only have to go to this partition, right? I can completely disregard the bottom partition and as a result we get a much quicker query speed. So now you have to understand that let's say you have, I don't know, five years of history, five years times 12 because we have 12 months in a year. This is 60 partitions. So we have 60 partitions, that's one thing. But the other thing is our query, instead of reading 60 times more data, just reads one partition, which is of course much, much quicker. So, but now you might ask, well, uh, if partitions are so good and they can help us so much, like why don't we just partition everything? Yeah, well, because it often comes with certain restrictions on the database management system itself that we are using and needs to be managed. Meaning we need to explicitly very often define the partitions and then we also see them sometimes as separate tables, which means that we need to manage them. We need to take a look what are the value ranges in our table. If we are configuring some backups, some restores on some maintenance work on our database, we need to manage it as we have here very different or we have essentially different tables now in our database, different objects. So this is the drawback of partitioning. One more very important use case is if you want to drop or delete very quickly a rec only certain records from a table, because usually what you can do is just drop a whole partition. So you don't have to write a delete that deletes all records where reporting date is equal to a certain value. But if you just want to delete records with this value and you have your table partitioned, you can always just drop a partition and it then removes all the records immediately. And that's very nice because sometimes you have to delete millions of records from a database. It can take a really, really long time. Let's now discuss some pros and cons in a little bit more detail because the topic requires it. So first pro is that there is a potential for quick reading, especially of many records. I say a potential because in order to utilize it, you need to properly write your queries or your queries need to have a proper construction, meaning they need to filter on the partitioning key. Now, other pro is that there is a possibility to drop a partition which removes the records from the table immediately. So let's say your partition contains like millions of records and you want to delete the records from the table. Normally you would have to write a delete statement, which perhaps locks the table. And here now you can just drop a partition and it removes the rows from the table almost immediately. But of course it removes all the rows uh, from the partition. You also have some potential to distribute the storage even in some cases to different servers and you can distribute your reads and writes. So the data can be read from a different partition at the same time in parallel. And it also can be written from several partitions at the same time or written to several partitions. And this allows you to limit the locks on the whole table and can improve a parallel processing of your database. The last thing I want to mention is simplified index management. So very often you will have now, instead of one big index, many smaller indexes for different partitions. This depends on some details, but there is a chance that it can improve to a certain degree the, um, the rights here of the data because there are just smaller indexes to manage. So they need to be uh, rebalanced uh, less often and it, the rebalancing does not take as long. But once again, I would say that all these pros are from the most impactful ones to the least impactful ones. And I think there are also many more when it comes to data management. But here I would like to focus on the pros that are related to what a developer would usually do in a database. And I think these are the most important ones. First con I would like to mention is management overhead with planning, creating and monitoring partitions. So you need to first sit down, take a look at what are the good candidates for your partitioning key. You need to then 
check the values, you need to create the partitions and you need to keep doing this going into the future if you want this concept to be managed properly. And what is important is if you establish this concept and then you have users who start using it, then you definitely need to be managing it. So for example, creating these partitions for the next month and so on. Of course, to a certain degree, you can automatize this process. There are tools who that allow us to do it quicker and easier, but this is something on top that we need to do. Next con, maybe a little bit surprising because it's potential for worse query performance. So we had a, a, a read improvement, but now in my opinion, sometimes there is a potential that the query performance actually deteriorates because you need to understand that it's not like with an index that a database can just decide not to use an index and completely ignore it in an explained plan. By the way, if you don't know what explain plans and how they are used, I will leave you a link to the video below that I did on explain plans. So it's not like with an index. If you partition a table, the database, the table is partitioned and the database must work with the partition table. Therefore, it can lead sometimes to some suboptimal uh, query performance especially if your explain plans are very com uh, very complex. If the database now needs to uh, or will read some unnecessary data from multiple partitions, uh, or if you have some kind of joints or aggregations, because now the data can be stored in multiple different places, it can take a little bit longer to bring it together. So I would say as a general, you need to watch out for all the queries that now will utilize data from uh, several partitions. Next one is a limitation in some features depending on the DBMS that you're using. So as an example, uh, in Postgres, the foreign keys are not uh, directly supported across partitions. So what this can do is you will not be able to use all the features, for example, when it comes to some constraints or data integrity that you want to introduce, but this is now dependent on the implementation. So for this, you need to refer to the DBMS that you are using. Next limitation like this would be that there is a limited number of partitioning strategies. So partitioning by list, partitioning by range, it may not really fit all of the use cases that you have. Last con I would like to mention is potential for slower writes. And once again, I say potential because it will depend on your DBMS, it will depend on your use case. However, now that your data can be stored in multiple different places, when you make a write, so you make an insert or an update, now, especially an insert, now the database has to figure out where does the data go, right? So this can, to a certain degree, slow down your writes. In the end of the day, you need to see, uh, based on your use cases, if this is something that can impact you and negatively. So to sum up the pros and cons, I think partitioning is something you should use only if you have a good use case for this. So if you really have the data that can be divided into these chunks, either by a range of the values, so by a range of dates or by a list of values, then you should definitely use it because it will improve the performance. And First and foremost, you should have an issue with performance in order to consider a partitioning because very often we start going into some crazy partitioning strategies without really having the, the need for it because it comes with a cost, right? So it comes with the management cost. It then cost, it comes with some potentials to actually deter the query performance that you're trying to improve it can limit you to a certain degree, right? It can make writing the data to a table slower. So you need to take this into account. You need to test it. And above all, you need to have a good reason to introduce it and be mainly would introduce it for the quicker reading purpose. Actually, the, the quicker reading or the possibility to drop a partition are, I would say, the two leading reasons why you would implement partitioning. Now we had a lot of theoretical talk. Let's just go to a very, very short example on Postgres where I will show you how to implement this in practice. So we are in Visual Studio Code. I have the SQL tools extension active and connected to my Postgres database. And let's now do some tests of the partition. So I have here some testing code prepared on the sides. I will now paste the code here. 
And basically, I just want to create a simple table that's called sales, has an ID, sale date, amount. And then I want to test out the partition by range. So I, for some reason, want to have separated each month, uh, perhaps then to do some calculations on the amounts for particular month. All right, so if I now run this, what I will get is an error. Unique constraint on partition table must include all partition columns. And now, essentially what comes into play is what I tried to tell you before is that partitioning introduce all of these seemingly weird constraints. So now what I need to do is I need to take this here, not create a primary key like this, but I need here I need to say primary key and then ID and I need to include sale date. So now if I execute this, now my table will be created. We can see create successfully executed. So we now managed to create a table. Now let's try to insert some data. What I have here prepared is a short script that allows you to insert for now just 10 records into a table. It will insert any date with this date plus 90 days and then just some random amount if I now run it. What we'll get is that no partition of relation sales found for the row that we have been trying to insert. This essentially means that we defined that the table is partitioned, but we did not define any partitions yet. So let's change it now. I will here also have some scripts. I will leave all the scripts uh, for you in a file down in the description below. I will now paste the create table and now you can directly see we are using create table statements to create partitions, right? We are creating January, February and March and we are defining a range that each of these partitions will hold for us a given range. So now I will execute this and this will now define our partitions. What this means is once again, we can come back to our insert and we can now insert some data. Let's maybe say insert 100,000 records. Okay, some data was inserted. Let's now check if indeed we have something. I will now limit it to five records just so we don't select too many and we can see five records. This means that the data has been indeed inserted. So next step, we would like to know if we are using the partition. So what I will just say is, I will just say explain analyze in order to generate an explain plan. And I will just say select star from sales where sale date equals, and now I will say something, let's say in January, so in the first month, and I will run this. So what I see right now is I see a sequential scan. That's good because we have some indexes on sales Jan 2024, right? Which means we are scanning only one partition. So if you remember back then, we created the sales Jan 2024, Feb 2024 and March 2024, which means we are the database engine has figured out that, hey, we are querying just sale date the 2nd of January 24. So I have to just scan this one partition. So let's now compare, let's take a look at the cost. So the cost is like 615.44. So let's, let's take a look what would happen if we didn't have this and we run this part. So now what you have to see, and that's very, very interesting right now, because now what we now see is that it's a sequential scan on three different partitions. Right, so we can directly see that we have three partitions where we are scanning it and automatically the cost has now increased to 2000. And we have three different sequential scans done. And you can directly see the execution time here, 15 milliseconds. If we come back here, execution times 2.5 milliseconds. So of course here we are returning fewer records, but Anyways, uh, the scan was necessary. If you want to manage your partitions now, let's check how many records do we have in the sales table now. 
we have 100,000 record. This is not surprising. This is how many we inserted. And now I told you it's very easy to drop one partition. You just say drop table sales John 2024, run an active connection, drop successfully executed. And we can once again check how many rows we have in the sales table and more or less one third was now removed and it was done as you saw basically immediately this is what you can do this is what i mentioned about the very quick uh, removal of the records and this is also everything i would like to tell you today about so we discussed what partitions are we discussed pros and cons and then we went over a quick example i would like to thank you all for watching please share the video comment if you have seen any mistakes in the video and what i explained if you have a different opinion or you just want to share your experiences with partitioning. And I will see you in the next video.